All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. All right, today we're going to do a video uh, after yesterday's playoff game in Alabama Notre Dame. Today I'm going to do a video on Alabama's pre-snap and post-snap RPOs and, and what the difference are between the two. Obviously, if you've watched this channel uh, for a long time, since 2012 or 13 when it started the last seven or eight years, you know I'm an Alabama fan, so figured I'd take a chance right now to talk a little bit about um, Alabama's RPOs, pre-snap, post-snap, why they're different, what makes them different, uh, the difference in my opinion, and then um, why they do what they do. So make sure you check out our partners. We got Dome Hats, which is the uh, headwear company that I use for play fast football and in the high school I'm at. This is one of our original, one of their original Dome Hats. All right, established in 2006. All right, so local Northeast Florida company. Make sure you check out Dome Hats, custom online hat builder. Build your own hat. Uh, every hat has a story. Let Dome help you tell your hat story. Game Strat Sideline Replay System. We use our feeling for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system. Check out Game Strat. Baker Sporting Goods, which is um, a local sporting goods company here in Northeast Florida that I use for our uniforms. I use it for our spirit packs. I use it for all the gear that we get for our players underneath uniforms. I use it for my coaching gear. Uh, we use it if we ever build any online uh, fan stores. We use them for our online fan stores, so make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods. Just Play Football, a powerful presentation. It's the digital software I use to diagram plays if I'm going to do uh, anything in our playbook or if I speak at clinics or do webinars on my other website on my Patreon website. I use Just Play as my diagramming tool. It is a, uh, it's a more educational way to present your playbook and your game plans to your players, so make sure you check out Just Play. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine have one in our weight room that we put up in the off season. Work on striking, elbows in, thumbs up, uh, proper eye discipline, where your eyes need to be, how to get out of your stance, hip roll, uh, explosion, violent with your striking. It's got different uh, uh, coils inside that make the tension every time kids get stronger, they get better at striking, they get better at, at the elbows where they need to be, coming out of their stance, rolling hips, change the coils to make the tension harder and harder to compress. So make sure you check out Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. High and tight ball training. Ball, ball training security, ball security, sorry, training aid that we use here with our skilled players. You have to have the football uh, held high and tight with all the proper points of pressure. If kids naturally have a tendency to get the arm out or the wrist low, all right, or they don't apply pressure up into the ribcage chest area, if they're not willing to do or they don't do all those things and they think they carry the ball properly, you give them the high and tight training aid. Get it to where they have those sensors in the panels. You have to hold the ball correctly. When you hear the beep, you're doing it correctly. Until you hear the beep, you're doing it wrong. So once they feel the beep and say, okay, that's where my wrist belongs, my elbow belongs, bicep, that's the pressure I need against my chest, that's the position of the ball, then have them do drills with the ball and make sure that the ball maintains the beep throughout the drill so that as they start to run or do whatever they're doing, they don't start swinging that ball all over the place. So make sure you check out high and tight ball security. Is job security, check out high and tight. So uh, if you watched the Alabama Notre game, game last night, all right, you'll see that Alabama got off to a really quick start. Alabama this year has been um, really, really good. In the last couple of years, it's not just this year, but uh, really good with their RPO game. Run pass option, the big, uh, you know, the big thing the last couple of years that has um, taken the world or the, or the football world by storm. Uh, you know, blocking run plays and then physically throwing the ball all right, down the field. And what I'm going to talk to you today is about kind of a slight difference in the two things where they have some leverage, stand-up bubble type screens off their RPOs, and then they have their actual downfield RPOs that they throw. And I'm going to kind of go through what the difference is, and, and I'll show you a little bit of how they get to those, how they move Devontae Smith around to get them where they want them, and then um, where it's kind of been, you know, a little bit more revolutionary for Alabama, at least the thought behind it. It, it, as an Alabama fan, it used to be a long time ago uh, when you go back to the Sean Alexander days and always had great tailbacks, always had great linemen, always played great defense. And e even in a lot of those old SEC games, you'd see a lot of heavy boxes with teams just imposing their will and trying to run the ball at 8, 9, 10, 11 man boxes, you know, going back 20, 30 years ago. And the evolution of the game at every level, but in, e even more so at Alabama, was Nick Saban realizing how teams were beating them and what teams were doing to <coughs> excuse me what teams were doing to exploit them and then figuring out what the athletes that Alabama has if you found a way to get them in space and block less people you can probably be a little bit more efficient as a coach because anytime you have to block less people 
there's probably a, you know a, a higher level of success because even if you're Alabama or like Notre Dame yesterday, probably two of the best offensive lines in the country this year. Every time you have to block somebody, you're blocking another scholarship player. That's a physical skill. That guy can destruct that block. He can get off that block. Anytime you have to do that, I think it takes a little bit more skill-orientated execution. The RPO game sometimes, whether it's off of leverage, numbers, or actual run fits, you're blocking less people and you're throwing the ball and putting it out in space to athletes. So to me... The RPO game, which is really option football on steroids, it's kind of the best of both worlds for teams like Alabama that have that dominant run game, but also have these you know ridiculous receivers in space now, but also have guys that are willing to sell out and block and do the things they need to do downfield, and they also just happen to have really good hybrid tight ends, you know, going back the last couple of years. So it's the perfect world for for Alabama, and Saban has realized that because of the things that that drive him nuts on defense, and then. From Kiffin to Sark to Brian Dayball to everybody they've had, they just do a great job evolving with their personnel. So this year they've got Mac Jones, which is a local kid from Northeast Florida, a local private school that, that, that is a perennial power in this area, so it's good to see, uh, as an Alabama fan, good to see him having success. But it's completely different because the RPOs are now an NFL-style RPO system where it's really all based on throwing the ball off the RPOs, less zone read, less Q run game, less Q RPO, more tailback driven RPO throws down the field uh, into space, sideline to sideline, which is something that, that they do a real good job with. So today we're going to talk about the difference in them. So the first touchdown they scored yesterday, all right, they ran, which, you know, and again, I'm not there. I don't know the play calls. I'm just going to tell you what I think it is. I think they, they run more duo than they run inside zone. So to me, I think they ran a version of a, of a gap duo play. All right, here. And they split zoned it by bringing, all right, that, the hybrid back across. And then they gave it. What they do in the backfield sometimes is a little bit funky. And I think it depends because throws are built in. All right, but there was no doubt that eventually Najee Harris actually took a step this way and came back to make it look like counter action. All right, what they did out here was they took Devontae Smith from wide and they motioned him inside. A couple reasons they do that. He's off the ball. They motion him. You can't press him. He's harder to challenge at the line. So that buys him up a little bit of time. But then they're also trying to give Mac Jones a chance to see the rotation of what's going on and how they're going to handle that. So they, they bring the motion as a little bit more eye candy, but it's also there to protect Devontae Smith. So... When you come out, what you saw right away was Notre Dame was in a heavy eight-man box with one high post safety, which is something that with Alabama, with the run game and then the receivers that they got, it's something that you're going to see a lot of. You see a heavy eight-man box with one high in the middle trying to protect these corners. All right, so what they had built in off of this was they just had the bubble after the inside motion by Devontae. He just turns and runs bubble, all right, and Mitchie stalks the number one. So what they do is they give Mac Jones the ability. He doesn't mesh with Najee on this play. There is no mesh involved. They give him the ability, all right, to throw off of leverage numbers and athletes in space. So as soon as he sees their press on, on Mitchie and he sees that this corner is off and just bumping slightly inside with the motion by Devontae, he knows that he's got a bubble screen to Devontae Smith with a defender eight yards off the ball that's got to make a tackle. He's got an eight-man box with a post safety there. So even though with, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they probably can't block one of these backers in that eight-man box, all right, in that almost under G front look. So he knows that the numbers in the box say throw, and then he knows outside with the motion to Devontae and Mitchie protecting him on the point, he knows that he's got an easy throw to make. So what you see Mac Jones do is take the snap, and raise up and throw the bubble with almost shortstop, second baseman type, quick feet. Raise up and throw the bubble. Najee Harris does shuffle and give some type of run action, but they do it so often that Najee, when he goes to shuffle and he sees that Mac Jones is not turning to him to mess the ball or give the ball, all right, he sees Mac Jones shuffle a throw, he just steps up and becomes another guy in protection. So it's a design run, and I can tell you it's a design run because you can watch the climb to the second level of the center guard and the guys that were actually getting up to the linebacker, if it was a protection that was a, a bubble screen protection, they probably would have just slid and sat on the line and not went downfield, all right, until they covered up after the throw. 
So it's definitely a duo gap style action with a split flow look here, but there's no mesh. There's no throw down the field. This is what I would consider, even though, all right, so run, RPOs mean run pass option. So any play that has the ability to have the ball ran with a blocking scheme or thrown is technically a run pass option. What I like to do for myself in my own offense, and then when I'm studying other teams on offense, I like to break them down between what I call leverage or numbers type screens or RPOs and then downfield mesh RPOs where they're physically sticking the ball in someone's stomach and then raising up and throwing off the run fit. This to me is a leverage, numbers, grass, stand-up screen. Yes, it's an RPO. Yes, I think it's tied to a run scheme. All right, so yes, it technically is an RPO, but there's no run action for the quarterback. It is out now almost as a gift or an access throw based on the numbers in the box and the matchup that they have outside. Okay, now the important thing to, to watch on this play, and it happened later on in reverse with Devontae Smith, this ends up being a man look out here. I, I don't know if it was corners traveled over. This was the, the really good free safety 14. All right, for Notre Dame. I don't know if it was corners over or they traveled in a man look, but this ended up some type of man look. And it goes for about a 35 to 40 yard touchdown. And on the touchdown, and this is what makes good teams, you know, so so hard to defend, John Mechie is blocking this corner through the goal line. When Devontae Smith scores, he's still blocking him through the goal line. Their ability to sell out for other players, their ability to sell out for their teammates. And later on in the game, Devontae Smith did the same thing, all right, for him. So that was 21 personnel off a of duo action. All right. The next one that they came back with was kind of 20 or 11 personnel, more 11 personnel with Forrester. All right. So they had Forrester lined up here as the H. Najee was back here. Mac Jones was there. All right. And then I don't remember who was in the receiver, but Devontae Smith was here in the slot. So kind of a two by one, 11 personnel Y off, or almost a two by two set. And. The box was somewhere, you know, something along the lines of something along the lines to something like that, or maybe the weak safety might have been dropped down. But what they did was they took, okay, they took Devontae and they motioned him from the slot and they brought him all the way across and they made him a number one out here and, and, and what created a bunch look. So they created almost a quasi bunch set there. All right, and they brought Devontae Smith across from the two in the slot to make him the number one out here. What they then proceeded to do was run wide zone back to the single. All right, so Najee Harris went across for wide zone back to the single. When Devontae came out of the, mo he came out of the motion, and it wasn't a full speed motion. When he got here, he, he shuffled. It was a motion where he reset. So he came across, and then he shuffled to get his hips and shoulders square to the line, and he actually became the number one receiver in what looked like a bunch set. From here, he then ran bubble. They took, and, and this is what they do a really good job of to me, out of these bunch sets. The point guy and then Forrester understand how to recreate leverage, so they go flat and wide before they just run up the field and miss blocks. So they both go flat, and wide before they go up, Devontae Smith runs the bubble, Najee runs wide zone that way. And then all Matt Jones does is he looks at the numbers and the leverage based off the motion. How do they adjust to the motion? Do they do anything? Does this, if, if this safety, if they have any rotation weak to the motion, that almost becomes three by one. So if there's any hard pull of the chain this way, this way, and again, this isn't exactly what the box was. So, you know, the game just happened yesterday. I, haven't, I don't have it in front of me. I, I didn't go through it a million times to draw up the exact box, but the theory of it is if there's no over-rotation to the motion, go ahead and throw the leverage screen, throw the bubble, and get two blockers out in front and put it on your best player. If there's some type of rotation or overload to your best player, then you run wide zone back to the top to another Heisman Trophy candidate running back who's pretty good. So this was, this was kind of a 11 personnel wide off look. It was Devontae Smith in the slot coming back to become the number one in what looks like a bunch set because it's a really tight X with Forrester kind of off the ball on the weak side. Motion him across to make it three by one. Go stretch back or wide zone back to the single with the bubble to the number one. Devontae Smith was the number one, but because it was bunched, they can get enough room to the sideline to run him on bubble, and then they do a really great job of running to where they need to. The point 
and Forrester do a great job of running to where they need to get on the bubble screen, realizing where the defenders have to run to play Devontae Smith. Again, Mac Jones races up, throws the bubble screen, and you've got yourself a, a 15, 20 yard gain for a first down. Again, to me, more leverage, numbers, access type deal where it's not really the ride and the side with Najee on, on the, or the tailback on the wide zone. It's not really ball in, ride the side, wide zone, then come up. It's more, hey, what's the rotation? What are the numbers? All right, there's the wide zone. Let me get out of the way and rip the bubble. So again, those first two to me are pre-snap RPOs. Yes, there are RPOs um, in, the, in the TV world, in the football world. There are RPOs because they're run pass options with runs and passes combined together. I label them a little bit differently for me because there's no mesh with the tailback. Those to me are being thrown by the quarterback pre-snap. Yes, it's tied to a run that could be a run, but they're being thrown, I think, in my opinion, the way I analyze the game and I look at offenses and the way we play offense, I, I look at those differently. Those are access gifts Throws that you're making based on numbers, grass, angles, leverage. You're not making them based off run fits. That's just my opinion. Now, the last one they did was actually what I consider true RPO. The last one was off a GF counter, again, from 21 personnel. So this time it was 21 personnel with the fullback set there. And then it was Devontae Smith in the slot with John Mechie out there. And then, again, they got this kind of G-front you know, underish type front here with a backer there. And then again, they got that heavy. I guess you can make that whoever you want to make it. They got that kind of heavy seven to eight-ish man box with one high in the middle trying to defend the middle of the field, but also keeping eight in a box to that personnel group. And then out what Alabama did was they ran some version of So some version of OF, all right, backfield action was something on that side because that's where the mesh happened. And then over here they ran the glance concept with a fin. So they ran the glance concept where they bent him and brought him back under. And then Mechie ran kind of the outside fin route, working his way back in, the five-yard fin. Okay, so they had the glance route with the fin. And what happened was this was actually, to me, a downfield RPO. And they run the glance in the slot, why they run the glance to Devontae a bunch, and all they're looking at is the run fit of, of that backer that they consider in conflict. So with this deep safety here, they feel like he's not in the window to throw, so all they're doing is looking at the run fits, and if they get a trigger or a response, post-snap, now this is post-snap, this is the difference, when they throw these glances like this, all right, and they did, um, they did this one for, for the touchdown, and they'll drop another one, something similar to another one that they ran, um, to, where, to where this one was the glance with the fin behind it. There was physically a mesh here. So whatever the steps were, there was a mesh and a read. And then the difference was, rather than grab, ball, gather, throw, this was actually mesh read, come up out to throw the glance, which they then completed in here. All right, And then it's a mismatch when you've got Devontae Smith on a free safety coming from 14, 18 yards deep, defending the middle of the field. By the time he comes up to make the tackle, he gets beat across his face for a touchdown there. So this was off of OF counter, a standard run play for them, all right, off of OF counter, and this was um, glance to the slot, Devontae Smith with Finn on the outside to, to Mechie, and this was, to me, post snap RPO with a ride and decide, ball in the stomach, waiting for a run fit, conflict player, pull and throw off of that. One other one I remember seeing... That was pretty neat because of all the attention that. And again, what, what, Sar, what Sarkeesian does a great job of doing is finding out, you know, he does a great job of moving his best players, and right now it's Devontae Smith with Waddle out, but he does a great job of hiding and moving his players and then figuring out how to get those guys the ball. All right, so when they come out with this personnel group like this, which is something that Alabama does more now than they ever have probably, all right, at least, you know, the last three, four, five years, even going back to Kiffin with Alabama, they're in this personnel group more than they ever were, you know, the last 30 years. All right, so they, 
more of this hybrid tight end, 11 personnel, Y off, however you want to look at it. This could be 87 Forrester, it could be 19 Billingsley, it could be any of those guys. And all they're doing is looking at boxes and structures and numbers, all right, and, and just trying to figure out how teams are trying to defend them, how teams are trying to take away Devontae Smith, what types of brackets are they playing on Devontae Smith, what types of two-for-ones are they trying to get, how high are they trying to keep everything in front. So what they did yesterday was they brought Devontae Smith in kind of orbit motion, back here. So they brought him in kind of flat to here and then full speed back there. They ran glance with Mechie there. They blocked one of their duo iso theories where they worked that and he all right, worked up on that. Okay, and then what they did was they threw, and again it's tough for me not being in the film room with him to determine whether it was thrown off of this motion to Devontae Smith or off of this fit on the ISO. What they ended up doing was they stuck the ball in Najee's stomach here, tailback stomach, quarterback puts it in the stomach, he reads, defense goes with best player, Heisman Trophy candidate, full speed, fast orbit out here, draws defenses wide, glance route behind it. It's the same theory, the same read, done off maybe a little bit different action in the run game because the action in the run game is irrelevant. Six man box, six blockers. Block power, block inside zone, block zone kick, block zone insert like this, duo insert, duo kick, block whatever you want to block that your six, block their six, and then just throw the RPOs off that. So this is what Alabama does to me, what's so simple. Glance theories, the theory doesn't change. It's the same route that they scored a touchdown on to Devontae in the slot. They scored a touchdown on Devontae with it the week before or against LSU. It's the same glance theory, thrown off the same structure. They're just getting to it a different way. So now it's two by one, fast motion to orbit, bubble screen flare, draw the defense out, fit the box, pull and throw the glance. Okay, so to me that's what makes Alabama right now so difficult is, is how good they are up front, even without the center, how good they are up front, how good they are in the run game with the running backs they have, and then how dangerous they are outside with Devontae Smith as a matchup and then Mechie, and then Forrester and Billingsley as those Y-off kind of guys. So that's what's making them so tough. But the thing to me is Alabama is actually, other than the movement of what they're doing with different formations and motions, the, the schemes and the plays of what they're doing is actually really simplistic. Their RPOs are really simplistic, simple glance throws, leverage screens, bubble screens, stand-up screens. They give Mac Jones the ability to determine how many guys are in the box to stop the run, and they give him the ability to get the ball out wide to his playmakers. So it's really fun to watch as an offensive guy, not only as an Alabama fan. Uh, obviously, next Monday we'll get the national championship game with Ohio State, which should be a good one. So I uh, hope your 2021 is off to a good start. A couple of really good games today. For those of you that follow this channel, you know that I watch uh, Iowa State on defense. They'll be on at 4 o'clock against Oregon. And then I absolutely love everything North Carolina does on offense. They'll be on tonight against Texas A&M. So to me, a really good slate of games uh, for the for the for what I like to study and the style of football that we like to play. So make sure you check those out today. Hope your new year gets off to a good start. Hope you're safe and healthy out there. Uh, remember to click the subscribe button, turn the notifications on, comment, uh, leave, a, leave a comment in there. I'll respond to almost every comment I see. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whether you like the videos or not, so we know the content that you like. I appreciate everything you guys do for Play Fast. Let's have a great new year, all right? And remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I'll catch you next time.